Good evening. Good evening. So happy to have all of you all here once again, and may we always remember why we are gathered here today. We could never make peace with God with our attendance, saying, hey, God, look at what I'm doing for you. But the good news is he's made peace with us. Everything's been taken care of. All our sins have been washed away, and we have a forever uh, future because of him. And uh, we also welcome our radio, radio listeners and all those who are listening to us on the Internet at this time as well. But uh, today we're going to have a, a sermon on patience. I think uh, our society has grown very impatient, maybe not with you, maybe with me, but the good news is our God remains patient with us. So let us begin our worship today with our opening hymn, which is hymn 920, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. stand. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, but deceive ourselves, then the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us now confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Let us now take this time and confess our sins privately to the Lord. Uh, 
And let us now lift up our heads and open up our hearts for this most wonderful news. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent us his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a atoning sacrifice for the sins of the entire world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your bountiful goodness, keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to do whatever pleases you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson for today is recorded here in Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. And the Lord Almighty pictures his patient love for Israel as an owner of a vineyard, patiently waiting for a good crop of fruit. I'll sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it from stones and planted it with the choicest, choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut down out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. The word of the Lord. Let us now continue with Psalm 80 as we read it responsively. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you, sit, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, 
Wake in your might, come and save us. You transplanted a vine from Egypt, you planted it among the nations, you cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, its branches reached as far as the sea. But your vine is cut down, and it is burned with fire. Let your hand rest on the one at your right hand. The Son of Man you have raised up for yourself. And we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Let us pray. Restore us, O God. We have sinned against you and deserve to be uprooted from our comfortable lives. But you have promised instead to graft us into the vine of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us nourishment and strength that we may bring forth the fruits of the Spirit and call on your name. And our second reading for today is recorded here in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21. Through Christ we have already attained the kingdom of heaven. God patiently waits for us to respond to his grace by living drastically different lives than the people of this world. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took on hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us, then, who are mature, should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have, have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and I'll tell you again even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. The lesson for today is recorded here in Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 43. Jesus tells us a story of God's patience. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned the third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. 
Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He'll bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, which is hymn number 862, Lord, Keep Us Steadfast in Your Word. stand. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen. Our text for consideration today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21, where we again read verses 33 through 39. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent, us, he sent his son to them. They'll respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Amen. You may be seated. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, you heard in the beginning of this service, I think our world has grown very, very impatient. And maybe you've grown a little more impatient as you grow older. I know that I have. Uh, there's many times I sit there, I don't know why I do this. Maybe it's not impatient, maybe it's my competitors. I, I don't know what it is, but even when I go to McDonald's and everything, it's just like, okay, now what one do I use? There's two lanes. Well, there's a car in this lane, there's a car in this lane, and then I looked, okay, let's see, oh, this one has a family, so they're going to be ordering a lot. This, there's a single guy here, he's probably just ordering coffee like me. So I'm going to go into the left one and everything and let the family sit there because I'll get my coffee earlier and everything, and then all of a sudden, they leave before this guy is even done ordering. Now, what are you ordering? My goodness, for one person, what's going on, Right? And sometimes if I go there and there's one car there, I kind of zoom up as fast as I can, you know, black coffee, and I know exactly, and I take off just to beat them. Why? 
Why have we grown so very impatient? You know, I'm sure that all of us have maybe made a call, you know, for a customer service, and they always kind of go like this, right? Okay, please help us uh, sit, uh, assist us where you would like to have your call placed, you know? Press one if you want this, press two if you want this, press three if you want this, and I continue to go, this representative, please. Representative, please. Representative, please. Representative, please. Okay, we'll get you to a representative. Why? Right? What is going on? I, I can remember a few weeks ago, I usually don't do any grocery shopping, but there I was with Lori, and uh, we probably had maybe 100 items, and we usually do the self-checkout, but there's a whole bunch of fruit there for her, and I'm not going through that. So we picked a line, and it took us forever. It's like a snail's pace, you know, and then it's just like we finally got up there and we realized why it was such a snail pace. So it's the cashier, it was just a, a teenage guy and everything, and he was taking one item at a time, looking for it, and then scanning it, and I think I went through three lifesavers at that time. <laughs> but we finally got through and we said, thank you, wish him a good day, then we looked at each other, at least he's working, right? I think... Our patience runs very thin with strangers, but I think our patience maybe is a little bit longer when it comes to treating those that we love, right? Training your, your child how to ride a bike, right? It takes some patience, but you don't mind doing that or anything like that, or helping them to figure out how to tie shoes. You're just going, our son's gonna need Velcro till he's 18. That's how much patience I have and everything. But again, with those that we love, we definitely have a little more patience. But you know what? I think the person that probably has the most patience in this world has to be a preschool teacher. It's not one or two or three children, okay? I could only do that, and for a limited time. But 26 little ones? I can't understand that. How in the world can you have that much patience? Maybe you've heard the story about this one preschool teacher. We'll just say Mrs. D, just so that we can read it later. It didn't happen to her or anything like that. But uh, so it's during winter, you know, getting all the snow pants on and all the winter clothes and all the boots on. She finally comes up to her 26th child and she's finally like done. Like so hopefully we'll have five minutes out there before I have to, you know, take all this stuff off again. And the, 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 the last little child said, you know, Mrs. D, you know, these aren't my boots. So she takes them all off and everything. And then he goes, they're my brothers and he lets me wear them. <laughs> my, my, my whole point though, is that our God is a hundred times more patient, a thousand more times patient with us. Why? Because he loves us with an unfathomable love. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. That's good news. He's very, very patient with us. He doesn't quit on us. That's huge, isn't it? The question is, are we quitting on him? Today we see in the first lesson that the Israelites were quitting on the Lord. Because, you know, they were his vineyard. They didn't want to hear anything about his word and the prophets that were sent to see them and everything. And in our gospel lesson, we see that they too also didn't want to hear the word, or at least the teachers of the law, the, the Pharisees and everything. They're trying to keep this away from the people. Well, today there's another vineyard. And uh, it's seated right before me. We are a planting of the Lord. We are the vineyard of the Lord. And if, if you think you're standing pretty firm, be careful that you don't fall. Are you quitting on the Lord? A lot of people are. But the good news is God does not quit on us. So today we uh, hear a lot about the vineyards, right? And I just told you they are God's people. The Old Testament, New Testament, and the people that are before me here today, we are a part of his vineyard. 
And I can uh, remember in the Old Testament, again, the problem wasn't with the landowners or the problem wasn't with the farmers or the tenants or anything like that because they were the prophets like Isaiah, okay, like Jeremiah. And I don't know if you remember Hosea, but Hosea, remember about uh, Hosea, was married to Gomer, his wife, and she was uh, an adulteress, more or less, and uh, uh, Hosea was going to leave her, and the Lord said, no, stay with her. And again, Gomer would go out and have another adulterous affair, and you know, Hosea was going to leave her again, and the Lord says, no, stay with her, and it went on for many, many times. And the only point was, that was the relationship that God had with his people Israel. They were adulterous. They ready to run out on him all the time. But like Hosea, he always remained faithful and patient with us, his vineyard. You see, the Lord literally did everything for his vineyard that we hear in the Old Testament in our first lesson. And that's why he says, What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have that then I have done for it. There was nothing more. He did it all. I'm sure that all of us can relate with something like this. I can remember when my children were in the teenage years and everything. You know, you do everything for your children, right? If they need braces, you get them braces. If they need certain types of clothes, you get them those certain types of clothes. If they want a certain kind of, you know, uh, sneakers, you get that certain type of sneakers. If they need some food, you give them some food. If they need some shelter, you give them some shelter. It goes on and on. And, and if they're having a good day, you're there for them. And if they're having a bad day, you're there for them. You do everything for them. And then all of a sudden, that one day you ask, hey, before you go off to work, or just before you, know, you head off to school tomorrow, can you just unload the dishwasher? And they just roll their eyes and say, are you kidding me? Why? You know that I'm only going to be here for a couple more years, Mom and Dad. Right? And I think it was Bill Cosby once said, uh, the mom would always, his mom would always say, I brought you into this world, and I can take you out of it. Right? But you might be saying, well, does this have to do with this text at all? Because we're just like those children. They're, we're just like my teenagers. Just look at everything that God has done for us. We're still a part of the land of the free and home of the brave, right? Yes, he's planted us here in a great nation where we can hear about God's word and we can hear about the freedom that God gives to us in his word, fully forgiven and a forever future. But just look at maybe the background, your background. You know, maybe most of you were baptized right here because your parents, again, look at all the things he has done for us, right? It's amazing. Look at, you know, 130 years of faithful pastors and faithful teachers right here. We have a beautiful new school. We have a full staff. And uh, hopefully soon, uh, a renovated sanctuary here. And we have so many different times to worship the Lord, to hear his word. Saturday, if Saturday doesn't work out for you, we have Sunday at 8 and 10.30. And if Sunday doesn't work out for you, we also have Monday night at 6.30. We have it on the radio, we have it on the internet. He gives us 720 hours a month. And we kind of say, I can't give him four hours. During this month, that's way too much. We roll our eyes. I don't need that much. Four hours out of 720 hours? What is Emmanuel trying to ask me? Don't they know I'm busy? Of course we know you're busy. But don't be busy enough not to hear the word on a weekly basis. Can't make it to worship? Come to one of our Bible studies. If you haven't been for communion, come. We'll privately commune you as well. Are you quitting on God? He's asking me way too much. He wants us to hear his word to bless us. The good thing is, God doesn't quit on us. He is patient 
so very patient with us. And in our gospel lesson today, we hear about another vineyard. And the vineyard uh, of the people, they were growing good. They are turning green. They're, they're, they're uh, producing fruits and everything because, well, Jesus was starting to tend the vineyard, okay? And everything was turning around in that vineyard. Uh, but the old tenants, they didn't really care for that. And they hated Jesus for that. But you know what? Jesus loved them too. He was very patient with those teachers of the law and those Pharisees. And he was reaching out to them too because he doesn't want them to perish either. And so, in the most loving way, he uses the law to really wake them up. If I ever come to your house using the law, it's not because I hate you. I'm using the law because I love you. I'm here to wake you up. And this is what he says to these tenants of the vineyard in the New Testament. And listen to another parable. There is a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them. More than the first time, the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Talk about patience, right? He sends uh, one servant to collect the fruit from the vineyard, and they beat him up. The second servant he sends, they kill him. Now comes the fire and brimstone? No. The third time he sends another servant, and he is stoned. Fire and brimstone? No. He sends another group of servants, more than the first, and they do the exact, exact same thing. They beat them up, kill them, or stone them. Fire and brimstone? No. He sends his only son, and they kill his only son. Amazing story on patience, right? I think we can learn a lot from this. He is patient with us. If someone even touched one of my children, they would be dead men. You can be thankful I'm not God. Because God is patient. He's patient with all of you. But I'll tell you, his patience can run out, though, too. And we hear about that in our first lesson. It says this, Now I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I'll take away its hedge, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. So has his patience run out on us? No. How do I know so? You're here tonight. You're here in the gospel again tonight. Though our sins are great, his grace is always greater. By his wounds we have been healed. How about this? How about we be a bumper crop for the Lord in this day and age? Or a bumper vineyard? And how do we do that? He's planted the seed. They show up for the water. Remember what it says here, the writer of Hebrews, it says this in Hebrews 10, 25. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. He didn't quit on us and he doesn't quit on us. Let's not quit on him. But let us also remember what it was in our epistle lesson today. 
Don't look back to all the missed opportunities. That's all gone. That's all forgiven. It says this, let's forget what is behind us and strain toward what is ahead. Guess what, my friends? You know what our gracious God has done for us? He's just transplanted us again in his grace. So let us be a bumper vineyard for our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us all confess our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we uh, go through the responsive prayer of the church, which uh, starts on page 15. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those who work in, whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. And O oh Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you bless our fellow believer, Emil Colby, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought him to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would comfort his loved ones with your precious promises and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. In triune God, we bring you our thanksgiving for blessing Trent and Barb Kale with 55 years of marriage. As companions on the journey through life, they have loved, consoled, and supported each other, but most important, they have grown closer to you. Your word has been a lamp to their feet and a light for their path. Keep them committed to each other and to you. Continue to supply their earthly needs according to your will. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your powerful angels to watch over Bill and Nikki Sharp as they find themselves in the middle of a war-torn Israel. Comfort them with your word and your presence and bring them safely back to our Emmanuel family. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Grant them your love and take them into your tender care. Hear us, Lord, as we uh, bring you our private petitions. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors, console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these blessings, Father, for the sake of Jesus, 
who died and rose again. We'll continue with tonight's offering. We'll now continue with our next hymn, which is hymn number 570, God Loved the World So Dad He Gave. Please stand for our closing prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be uh, seated as we sing our, our closing hymn, Lord Dismiss Us with Your Blessing, that is hymn number 927. Again, uh, good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, just a few announcements. Again, they're all on your yellow pages. But again, next Sunday we have our voters meeting. And that will be uh, held uh, right here in the School of Commons at 9.15. So I hope to see many of you there. Then also on that same front page, uh, uh, Trunk or Treat Candy Donations. Uh, that's going to be held on October 31st. And last year we probably had like five, 600 kids on campus that came for that. But uh, uh, if you'd like to be a part of Trunk or Treat, let me know. Or if you'd like to also open up your trunk and hand out treats, uh, let me know. We'll find a place for you. But if you can't, if you'd like to bring some candy in, you can usually uh, drop it in my office. Probably not uh, Pastor Dorn's or Pastor Tiefel's. I'll keep it safe anyways. But uh, if you could help out that way, and please just have it all packaged up, that kind of thing. Uh, just like, hey, I want to clear out my cupboards, and I'm going to just get rid of it here. You know, if you could uh, just get some uh, uh, some really good candy and everything, that'd be greatly appreciated. And then also um, uh, a new Bible site that's going to be taking place, and uh, it's uh, Grief Share Surviving the Holidays. If uh, you've lost a loved one over the last uh, few years, again, we'll be running this uh, Tuesday, uh, November 14th at 1 o'clock and 6.30. And then also the same one on Tuesday, December 5th at 1 o'clock and 6.30 p.m. again. This is a great time to maybe invite one of your friends. You know, uh, maybe you've gone through this, but maybe uh, you know a friend that's gone through this or is going through this. And again, uh, it, it does really great things, you know, uh, especially with people that have gone through the same thing, but also when they hear about God's Word and that we do have a reunion that we can look forward to there one day. I think that is all I have for you. There's a lot of other good things in here, so please, I just noted a few of them, read through all those, okay? Those are all the announcements. You uh, take care, God bless all of you, and let us take this time and greet someone that's sitting next to you. Thank you.